Hello everyone, welcome to Nasso Academy. In the previous lecture, we understood array of objects properly. Now in this lecture, we will understand the concept of passing objects as arguments to a specific function. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is pass by value. First, we will understand the concept of pass by value. Then we will understand pass by reference and pass by pointer. So these are the topics of this lecture. Let's start with the first one that is pass by value. Pass by value occurs when we pass the name of the object to a specific function as argument and in the receiving end we also have an object. So in case of pass by value, we pass the copy of the object to a specific function. When we pass the name of the object to a function, we pass the copy of that object to that function. And whatever changes we make to the object inside the function does not affect the original object because we pass the copy of the object, not the original object to a specific function. So, this is the concept of pass by value. Now, to understand this properly, let's take one example program. Here, I've defined this class student with private members role and marks, where role represents roll number and marks is used to store marks of a specific student. These are public member functions, put data and display. Through put data function, we can store values in these private members, role and marks via parameters A and B. And through the display function, we can display roll number and marks of a specific student on the screen. So this is the class student and this is the main function. Currently, this main function has just one statement return zero. Now let's define function modify data which is the normal function. This is the function modify data which is defined outside this class. We can call this function directly without the need of an object. This function has the return type void and it has three parameters. The first parameter is the object of the class student. This object is s. The remaining parameters are variable r with integer type and variable m with float type. R represents roll number and m represents marks of a specific student. Now here, I am calling the put data function via this object s and to this function, I am passing the values of r and m. And here, through this object s, I am calling the display function. This is possible because these functions are member functions of this class. And through the object of this class, we can call these functions as these are public member functions. I hope this is clear to you. Now, here is the definition of the main function. Inside this main function, let's define the object of this class. Let's name it S1. So, S1 is the object of class student. Now, through this object, we can call these member functions because these are public member functions. Here I am calling put data function through the S1 object and I am passing 101 and 98.7 values to these variables. So, roll will receive value 101 and marks will receive 98.7. And through the S1 object, I am calling the display function. This means roll number 101 and marks 98.7 will be displayed on the screen because these values are provided via the S1 object. So we will get this output when we execute this program. We will get before call roll number 101 marks 98.7. We are getting this message before call which indicates that before calling this function modify data, roll number is 101 and marks is 
this message is displayed with the help of this STDC out statement. I hope this is completely clear to you. Now, let's call this modify data function and let's pass the S1 object to this function as the argument like this. Here I'm calling the modify data function. I have passed S1, 101 and 78.9 to this function. Here I'm passing the name of this object. As mentioned already, if we pass the name of the object to a specific function, we pass it by value. This means copy of the object will be passed, not the original object. So here we are passing the copy of the object S1 to this object S. This means when we call the display function through the S object, we will receive roll number as 101 and marks as 98.7 because this object has received the copy of S1. And S1 has provided these values to these variables, roll and marks. I hope this is clear to you. Here I'm passing these values as well, 101 and 78.9. These values will be received by variables R and M. Here I'm calling the put data function through the S object. We know that S has received the copy of S1. It seems like whatever the changes we make through the S object will be reflected in S1. But this is not the case. Here through this put data function, I am providing values 101 and 78.9 to these variables roll and marks. But these values are specific to this object S, which is not same as S1. This object has received the copy of S1. This is not representing the original object S1. So whatever changes we make over here will not be reflected in S1. This is what I have mentioned here. Any changes made to the object inside the function does not affect the original object. Through this object, we have provided values 101 and 78.9 to roll and marks. These changes will not be reflected in S1. Now, if we call display function through S, then we will receive roll number as 101 and marks as 78.9 on the screen because we are calling this function through the S object. But when we complete this function and when we get back to here and when we call display function through S1, we will get output as roll number 101 and marks. 98.7, not 78.9. I hope this is clear to you. This is because S1 is passed by value. And therefore, any changes we make inside the function will not be reflected in the original object. So we will get this output after call roll number 101 mark 78.9, we are getting this output because of this modified data function and we are getting this output roll number 101 and marks 98.7 because of S1 dot display. I hope this is clear to you. So this is the concept of pass by value. When we call a function and when we pass the name of the object to a specific object of the function, then we pass the copy of that object, not the original object. And therefore, any changes made to the object inside the function will not be reflected in the original object. And this is what we can see from the output. So with this, we have understood pass by value properly. Now, let's move to the second topic to understand pass by reference. Now, what is pass by reference? In case of pass by reference, we pass the name of the object to a specific function. But 
in the receiving end, we have the reference to the object. This means we create alias or just another name to the original object inside the function and therefore we access the original object inside the function. So, in case of pass by reference, original object is passed to the function as an alias. And therefore, any changes made inside the function are reflected in the original object as well. Now, let's understand this properly through the same example we took before. Here is the example program. We have this modify data function and this function is called over here. Here we are passing the S1 object, we are passing the name. Here we need the reference to this object. We can create reference easily, we know this already. We need ampersand symbol over here. Now we have the reference to this object S1, which is S. S is just another name for this original object. So if we call the put data function through S, this means we call the put data function through the S1 object. So it is not the case we have a different object over here. S means S1 because S is just another name for S1. So we are calling the put data function through the S1 object in this function. That is the concept. Now this means role will receive value 101 and marks will receive value 78.9 and the changes are reflected in S1 object because we have called this function through S1 object. Now when we call display function through S, that is, we call display function through S1, we will get roll number as 101 and marks 78.9. And here if we call display function through S1, then also we will get the same output. Roll number as 101, marks as 78.9. So we know what is the output. Before call, we will get roll number 101 and marks 98.7. This makes sense. But after call, we are getting roll number as 101 and marks 78.9 in both these cases. This is because S is just another name for S1. It is the reference to S1. Therefore, we are calling put data and display functions through S1. I hope this idea is clear to you. This is the reason why we are getting same output in these cases. We are getting roll number 101 and mark 78.9 because of this function and we are getting the same output because of S1.display. So with this, we have understood pass by reference as well. This means we are done with the second topic also. Now let's move to the third topic to understand pass by pointer. In case of pass by pointer, we pass the address of the object as argument to a specific function. And in the receiving end, we must have the pointer to the object to receive the address correctly. So, in this case, we pass address of the object to a specific function. As we are passing the address of a specific object, this means we are passing that object only to the function. We can access the object via the pointer to that object. And therefore, we can directly access the original object inside the function. So, here, any changes made inside the function are reflected in the original object. Because we make changes to the original object via the pointer to the object. That is the concept of pass by pointer. It is no different from pass by reference. There are only syntactical differences. Let's understand this through the example program. Here is the same example program. Here, I am calling the modify data function and I am passing S1. Instead of passing S1, we need to pass the address of S1. So, here we need ampersand S1. Now, in the receiving end, we need pointer to this object. So, here we need to define the pointer. 
of the object S1 like this. We need to put asterisk after student. Now we have S as the pointer to this object. This means we can directly access this object within this function. Now we have the access to the original object in this function. Here we can replace these dot operators by arrow operators. So here through the pointer S, we are calling put data and display functions. This means through the S1 object, we are calling put data and display functions. This is the meaning. So it is no different from pass by reference. We can see there is only syntactical difference between the two. When we execute the program, we will get the same output as before. We are getting roll number as 101 and marks as 78.9 in both the cases. So with this, we have understood pass by pointer as well. This means we are done with this topic also. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.